In this video, we will talk about the before and after gas laws as well as the ideal gas law. And we will learn how to derive every single gas law just from the ideal gas law. So um, the four variables that are manipulated with the different gas laws, we will come to learn that that's going to be pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. So moles are going to be um, N. Temperature has got to be in Kelvin. Volume is typically in liters, but not always. And then pressure is typically in ATMs, but not always. Okay, but N and T have got to be in moles and Kelvin, respectively. Okay, so what is the relationship between pressure and volume? If I look at this picture, what I'm doing is I am uh, taking a piston and I'm pushing it down and I am decreasing the volume. Okay, so what is the relationship between pressure and volume? And that relationship is that as pressure increases, the volume must decrease or volume decreases. Okay. And commonly what we'll do is we'll look at this with a balloon. And let me make my balloon a little bit smaller. So if I have a balloon and I push on it from the outside, so I increase the pressure, that balloon will shrink a little bit because the pressure um, is increased. So is this a direct or indirect relationship? Some students struggle with this, but this is actually going to be an indirect relationship. And the reason why is that as one variable increases, the other variable decreases okay and um, this is going to be a law called Boyle's law I will not require that you know that in fact I didn't I never know Boyle's law if someone stopped me on the side of the road and said what is Boyle's law I don't know that I would be able to um, remember it but what I do know is that if I have pressure and I have volume it's going to be p1 v1 equals p2 v2 the ones mean that it this is the before situation or the initial. And the twos mean that this is after or uh, the final. Okay. And here with volume, volume and pressure do not have to be um, in atmospheres or liters. But the pressure units must be the same. Okay, units must be the same. So what commonly will happen is sometimes we'll have milliliters, because those are easier to measure in lab, and as long as they're the same on each side, then we're good. And then sometimes we'll have ATMs, and that's what we typically have. So ATMs, if it's on one side, it would have to be on the other side. But we could also put TOR as long as TOR goes on the other side. And the only reason that this is, is because we have pressure on each side and volume on each side. Okay, so let's do an example problem here. Um, with gas laws, I think it's a great idea to underline what you're given and circle what you're trying to find. And so we are given a syringe. It is filled with 60 milliliters, at, uh, one atmospheres. And then we compress the syringe to 20 milliliters, and we want to know the final pressure. So our formula is P1V1 equals P2V2. The initial pressure is... 1.00 atm the initial volume is 60.0 milliliters the final pressure or p2 is what i'm solving for and then the final volume was 20.0 milliliters and so when i math that out p2 ends up being 3.00 atms this should make sense because if i decrease the volume by one third um, or two one third of its original, the pressure should be three times the amount because it's an indirect relationship. 
Okay, so what is the relationship between pressure and temperature? And um, so I have a flame here, and I've got some particles, and they cause uh, some pressure. Pressure is caused by particles hitting the side of their container, but I increase the temperature, and I don't allow the volume to change. So this is staying right there. Those particles are going to be hitting the wall more frequently, and they're going to be hitting it uh, at a higher speed. And so what this means is that as temperature increases, pressure will also increase. And so since they both increase, this is going to be considered a direct relationship. And that means uh, that as one variable increases, so does the other one. This is called guy lussacs law with pressure and uh, temperature. And since this is a direct relationship, what I remember is that the variables must be directly on top of each other. So we have pressure divided by temperature equals pressure divided by temperature, the ones meaning before and the twos meaning after. But this could also be T1 over P1 equals T2 over P2. This is mathematically the same. But what must be remembered is that temperature must always be in Kelvin. Okay, you must know that. And don't forget that to get to Kelvin, you just take the degree Celsius temperature and add 273 to it. Okay, so let's see what this looks like in example D. We've got... Um, a flask and we fill it with carbon dioxide and we're going to heat it. So automatically, if I know the pressure began at 98 kilopascals, I know that the final pressure should be more because I heated it. I went from 10 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. And so I'm going to take P1 divided by T1 equals P2 divided by T2. And my initial pressure was 98 kPa. What I know then is when I solve for P2, P2 will also be in kilopascals because the pressure units need to be the same on each side. And then with temperature, a lot of people will plug in 10 degrees Celsius here and 40 degrees Celsius here. And I say, okay, you're close, but don't forget it's got to be in Kelvin. And the reason why is this. It looks like I quadrupled the temperature, so I should quadruple the pressure. But remember, we use Kelvin because we want the absolute temperature, one that could never be negative. Okay, so this 10 degrees Celsius, this is 283 Kelvin. This 40 degrees Celsius is 313 Kelvin. Okay, so now here's how you're going to solve this. You're just going to cross multiply. You're going to take 313 and multiply it over and get 313 times 98 okay and then that'll isolate p2 and so p2 when i solve it out i will get about 108 kilopascals as my final answer okay now let's talk about the relationship between volume and temperature okay if i put if i increase the temperature these particles, like we just said, are going to have more energy, more kinetic energy. So what that means is they're going to hit the walls of their container at a higher speed and higher force. Now, if the volume can change of your container, then they're going to make your container larger because they're going to push the container to be larger with the higher force. So what we know is that as temp increases... So does volume. And since this is, uh, they both increase, this would be a direct relationship. And I can actually just copy and paste this from up here to save myself some time. And 
As one variable increases, so does the other variable. Since it's a direct relationship, I know that um, the variables will be directly on top of each other. So I can say v1 divided by t1 equals v2 divided by t2. Or it could also be t1 over v1 equals t2 over v2. And um, volume could be in any unit as long as it's the same on each side. But temp must always be in Kelvin. Okay, you got to remember that. So let's look at example 4D. We've got a balloon. We're going to fill it with 1.5 liters of air at 20 degrees Celsius. I'm going to pause right now. I've done enough gas law problems that whenever I see something in Celsius, the first thing I do is I get it into Kelvin by adding 273 to it. So this is 293 Kelvin. And we're going to place it in the freezer. So what should happen if we're going in the freezer and it's at 5 degrees Celsius? Well, my math will always tell me, but I should be able to predict that the final volume is going to be less than 1.5 liters. Okay, that's because we're getting cooler. So I'm going to say V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. The initial volume was 1.5 liters. The new volume, when I solve for it, it will also be in liters. This 5 degrees Celsius, I forgot to write that. That's going to be uh, 278 Kelvin. So I have 293 Kelvin. And then 278 Kelvin as the new temperature. And when I math that out, my volume is just a little bit less. It's at 1.42 liters. Don't forget the math. We'll just be multiplying 278 on each side to get rid of uh, or to isolate V2. Okay. Now, the combined gas law. I don't know really what this is, but here's what I do know is that P1, V1 equals P2, V2. That's with pressure and volume. And if I added temperature, that would just be divided by T1 and divided by T1. So I think that that is uh, the combined gas law. There's another one that it could be. We're not worried about the actual name. Okay, I'm going to show you here in just a minute how to get every single gas law from the ideal gas law. So what this says is that we've got 5.36 liters of nitrogen and it's at negative 25 degrees Celsius. So since it's at negative 25 degrees Celsius, I'm going to add that to 273, and I get 248 Kelvin, and its uh, pressure is 733 millimeters of mercury. And I want to know what the volume will be at 128 degrees Celsius, which is 401 Kelvin and 1.5 atmospheres. So if I take this formula, I've got all these variables, so this one looks like it'll be good. And I've got to see what I know. I'm solving for this new volume. And I've got, right now, I've got the temperature figured out, and I've got that. So I'm going to start plugging things in, and I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be 248 Kelvin equals, oh, this is T2, actually. Oops. This will be uh, 401 Kelvin, and the pressure that we started with was 733 millimeters of mercury, and then we ended at 1.5 atmospheres. Hopefully you see these pressure units right now, ATMs and millimeters of mercury, right now they are not compatible. So what I'm going to do is I like ATMs. So I'm going to write up here 733 millimeters of mercury. There's 760 millimeters of mercury in one ATM. So that'll give me 0 0.96 ATMs that I started with. The initial volume was 5.36 liters. And so when I solve for V2, V2 is going to be in liters because my volume unit has to be the same on each side. And when I do this, I'm going to multiply each side by 401k. Okay, and then I'm going to divide by 
So basically multiply each side by 401k, that gets the 401k to drop out. And then I'll divide by 1.5, and that'll give me V2. So this is all your math kind of in a condensed form, and I get 3.5 liters. Okay. Now, the ideal gas law. I've put a note here that you have to be stellar at the ideal gas law. Once it shows up, it kind of never goes away. And what the ideal gas law is, is PV equals NRT. Some people pronounce that uh, pervnert. Some people pronounce that pivnert. You choose what you want. And pressure for the ideal gas law needs to be probably ATMs. Volume needs to be liters. Moles, obviously, has to be moles. And then temperature has to be Kelvin. Okay, and then we have this gas constant R. And this varies... However, you will only see me do one gas constant. So the gas constant does vary, okay? And it depends on what your pressure unit is. So the gas constant R is 0.0821 or 8.315 or 62.4. If you're using ATMs, which I always use, that is your gas constant. If you're using kilopascals, which I never use, 8.315 is your gas constant. If you use millimeters of mercury, 62.4 is your unit for R. I like to make life simple. So what I always do is I just always use ATMs. That way I only have to memorize one gas constant. Now let me show you, this is probably the most important part of this whole video. Let me show you how to get every single gas law. So the ideal gas law is PV equals N, oops, N R T. And not every problem gives you moles, temperatures, pressure, and volume. Sometimes you're only given a couple. So let's say you're only given pressure and volume. Well, I look at my ideal gas law and I say, are those variables already on the same side? Pressure and volume are. So I know my gas law is going to be PV equals PV, where the left-hand side is going to be my before or my ones, and my right-hand side is going to be my after or my twos. Okay, so that's one gas law. Let's say, though, we're given pressure and temperature, so in red here. Are those on the same side of my equation? The answer is no. So how could I get those on the same side? Well, if I take pressure, I could divide over temperature, and I could get P over T equals P over T, 1, 1, 2, 2. But what I could have also said is temperatures over here, let's divide over pressure. And so this also could have been T1 over P1 equals T2 over P2. Okay, um, let's say I have another problem. Let's say it gives me pressure, volume, and moles. We haven't seen something with moles just yet. Well, pressure and volume are on the same side, so what I could do is I could divide over N. So I could get PV over N equals PV over N, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. But what I could have also done is divided over P and V over onto N side, and so I could have gotten N divided by PV equals N over PV, one, 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 or two, two, two. And heck, I could have gone really crazy, and I'm gonna erase a lot of this right now, and I could have said, I could have done pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. Well, pressure and volume are on the same side, divided over moles and temperature. And I could get uh, what also might be considered a combined gas law here. Okay, so that is how you get all your gas laws from PV equals NRT. Now, we're going to go through some examples where I've mixed up if it's a ideal gas law or a PV equals NRT, or a before and after gas law problem. And the first thing you want to do when you read a gas law problem is you want to diagnose, is it before and after, or is it um, PV equals NRT? The way you're going to tell is, 
if they just give you pressure, volume, moles, and they ask for the temperature, nothing is changing. So it would be a PV equals NRT problem. But if they give you stuff and like, let's say the pressure starts out at something, but then it changes, that's going to be a before and after gas law problem. So in this first example, we are given a substance that uh, bursts into flames when it's exposed to air. It's got a pressure of 345 torr at a temperature of negative 15 degrees Celsius, which is 258 Kelvin, and a volume of 3.48 liters. We're changing the conditions. Okay, that means we're going to our after situation. So the temperature is now 36 degrees Celsius. That would be 309 Kelvin. And uh, the pressure is now 468 torr. We want to know what the volume will be. So right now I know this is a before and after gas laws problem. So I have to derive my formula because I don't want to really think if this is a Boyle's law or a Charles law or any of the other uh, gas laws. I just want to be able to derive it. And so what I know is that, I yes, I'm given pressure. Yes, I'm given volume. I was not given any moles, but I was given temperature. So I can say that the formula I'm going to use is PV divided by T equals PV divided by T, 111222. Two, two. I'm going to plug in what I know. I started that with 345 Tor. And I can use Tor because... I ended up finishing with Tor, so the math will work out. I started with 3.48 liters. So when I solve for volume, it will be in liters. Okay, This will end up solving in liters, not because I have to, but because that's what the math will be. So the new pressure was 468 Tor. We're solving for V2. We started and we were at 258 Kelvin, and when we finished, we're at 309 Kelvin, and so V2 will be 3.07 liters. As a reminder, here's what the math is. I'll multiply each side by uh, 3 point, or 309 Kelvin, okay? And then I'll divide by 468 Tor. Okay, so let's look at this second one. What we are given is 3.7 moles of propane. We're at a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, which is um, 301 Kelvin. And we're under a pressure of 152 or 154.2 kilopascals. And we want to know what volume the sample occupies. Notice, this is not a before and after gas law problem because nothing is really changing. It just wants to know what the volume is. So I'm going to use PV equals NRT, and I'm just going to plug in directly to this. Um, we're solving for volume, so that will be left unknown. I always solve for my pressures in atmospheres, which you don't technically have to do, but I always do, so I'm going to show how to do that right now. There's 101.3 kPa's in one ATM, and so that will be 1.522 ATMs. N is 3.7 moles of propane. R is 0 0.0821. And let me show you how to get the units of R. Start reading your PV equals NRT. Pressure is ATMs. Volume will be in liters. We're on the opposite side of the equation. So now we have moles. And then what I will end up adding here is Kelvin. We are at 300 and one Kelvin. So even though your formula sheet does have these units, the units should make sense. The units are there to make sure that when we solve for a variable, it is in the correct units mathematically. And I get 60 liters as my final answer. So take 3.7 times 0.0821 times 301 and then divide over 1.522, okay?